All right, I'm by no means an expert in physics, but if you guys have questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. I'll try and answer them as best as I can. My credentials are my B plus in my physics class, junior in high school, and my mom also says I'm very smart. Hold on, hold on, hold on. All right. Perfect. Ryan Little. <laughs> All right, what's up, Jump Squad? It's Chi. I know it's been a while, but I've been going through some stuff. I'm just getting back from a power outage that lasted four days. I've been dealing with some Achilles pain and more recently some lower back pain. And sometimes I just wonder if it's all worth it. You know, it just feels like I take one step forward and two steps back and Anyways, I made that video a few weeks back and I modeled it after the 2K animation. You know, the one where you go for a dunk and it goes in slow motion, it shows you their vertical and everything in the background kind of becomes like desaturated. I thought I killed that edit. It got me thinking this would be a cool topic to cover. So a thing to note, your vertical measured with frame counting is probably gonna differ from your vertical measured on a Vertec or force plate. If you're comparing two of the same measurements using the same system, it can be a good way to see where you are now with your vertical, set future goals for yourself, and just track your progress. All right, so here with the frame counter app, we can go into import video and find the video that you want that you recorded in slow motion. All right, so here's how we're gonna determine our flight time. I'm gonna use the scrubber to find the point at which I leave the ground. I can do frame by frame adjustments with this button. Once I find the point where I leave the ground, I go ahead and I press start in the top left corner. And now in the right corner, as I go forward, it's gonna start counting those frames. So I can play ahead, I can scrub, and I want to take note of when I touch back down on the ground. So I touch back down on the ground after 202 frames. So now I take 202 divided by 240 and get 0.842 seconds. If I divide that in half, I get the time from the peak of the jump to when I touch back down on the ground. All right, so what we're doing here is calculating the distance from the peak of the jump to when we land back down on the ground. To do this, we'll use the formula D equals one half times A times t squared. All right, so d is distance, and that's what we're solving for. t is the time from the peak of the jump to when we land back down on the ground. It's what we just calculated by dividing total flight time by two. And a is acceleration due to gravity, which is a constant on the Earth's surface. All right, let's go ahead and plug in what we know. First, we take 0.421 and square it and get 0.177. Then we multiply 0.5 and 9.81 to get 4.905. Finally, we multiply 4.905 and 0.177 to get our vertical displacement, which comes out to 0.868 meters. This converts to a jump of about 34.2 inches. So I follow a standard when I'm measuring my vertical using frames. I'm going to take the first frame that my toes leave the ground and also the first frame when my toes touch back down on the ground. Consistency in your measurements is gonna make your results more reliable, especially when you're comparing those results to each other. Let me know if you guys think this is an accurate calculation. The boxes to the left of me were stacked up to 36 inches. So this is a jump at the Dunk Camp 2019 where I tested a 41 and a half inch vertical. So somehow this video plays back with 109 frames per second. And using the frame counter app, I determined I was in the air for 96 frames. Since I know the frame rate I'm dealing with, I can find my flight time and I can calculate my vertical. I also coded a super simple program with Python just for myself to use. You enter the number of frames you're in the air for, it returns the time you spent in the air in seconds, your vertical displacement in meters, and then your vertical displacement in inches. Come check it out. We're gonna run the program and enter the frame rate of the video. In this case, the frame rate was 109 frames per second. Then we enter the number of frames we spent in the air. Our flight time lasted 96 frames. We just enter 96, hit enter, and... All right, so what was actually calculated was 0.88 total seconds spent in the air and a vertical jump of 0.951 meters or 37.44 inches. All right, so this is a video I took of Jordan Kilgannon at the dunk camp. If you don't know who Jordan is, I actually can't help you, but he's one of the highest jumpers in the world, as well as one of the best dunkers in the world. And so I'm gonna check out his flight time on this and we're gonna see if we can get a vertical on this jump. This is from his max vert test where he ended up testing at 49 and a half inches. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and run the program. 
and enter the frame rate of the video, which was 240 frames per second. Then I'll go and enter how many frames Jordan was in the air for. He was in the air for 232 frames. And there's all the information on that jump. So as you can see, my calculation of Jordan's vert was a few inches shorter than what he actually ended up testing. This isn't because he doesn't essentially have a 50 inch vertical, but these are the type of discrepancies you're gonna see across the board with any athlete when comparing frame counting and vertec. The amount of time he spends in the air is absolutely ridiculous and I hope to one day be able to do the same. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to leave me a like if you did, a dislike if you didn't. Hit the subscribe button, join the jump squad, do it as a birthday present to me. It was last month, but let's pretend like it's whenever you're watching this video. Appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for 4,000 subscribers and I'll see you guys in the next one.